Good afternoon, everybody. Vro Workman here. That's right. It's Big V with Workman Success Systems. I want to welcome you to Risk Media's Agent Webinar Series. Today we have fantastic guests. We have unbelievable content, and I promise you it's going to be well worth the time that you spend with us today. I want to just take a second and thank all of you for being here and let you know that I understand how busy you are and how important it is that we take time to not only work in our business, but also work on our business. And the great folks at Risk Media really put a lot of time and effort in making sure that this webinar series has value to you. And so make sure that when you have a minute, uh, let them know how you feel about the call and uh, provide feedback. And let's jump in and start today. Um, once again, I'm Bro Workman, founder and CEO of Workman Success Systems. We help agents all over the world that want to grow their business through empowering training and coaching programs. And you can find us at WorkmanSuccessSystems.com. <coughs> I want to encourage you during the call today to do a couple of things. First of all, uh, we'd like the call to be interactive. If you, have question, if you have questions or comments or things that come up during the call and you really would like a question, hit the question bar and then just type in your question. We'll monitor those questions throughout the call and we'll be answering questions uh, during specific predetermined times. Um, if we don't answer your question right away, we'll wait to an appropriate time with our speaker so that we can get through the content. We always have more content than an hour allows, so uh, we're very conscientious to make sure we deliver what we've uh, prepared for you today. Uh, the next, the next thing is, is following the seminar. Uh, you, some, you'll be asked for, uh, you'll be asked to do a quick survey. Please do that. And if you'll stay to the very end of the webinar today. Uh, we're going to give you some really cool things. Both of our presenters today are content rich. Um, that means that they have a lot of information that they're going to share with you, uh, including listing presentations, marketing materials. Stay to the end, I'm going to give you a website address where you can go and download the content that's being offered by our esteemed speakers today. I want to uh, give a great shout out to one of our partners in this webinar series who's not only sponsored this but others. Uh, I want to say hi to Mark, Mark Millar with Quicken Loans. Mark, welcome to the call today, and thanks again for being such a great partner. Hey, Viral, thanks for the opportunity. Thanks, uh, everybody out there, for uh, hopping on uh, for the next hour or so. We really are excited about bringing great panelists, great topics uh, to our realtor base that's out there in the country, and really look forward to the next hour with, uh, with both Dano and Melinda. You know what's been kind of fun, uh, Mark, is that uh, as I've gotten to know more about Quicken Loans as we've done this webinar series, I've started to do a little more research. And, you know, as an agent out in Salt Lake City, Utah, I see advertising for Quicken Loans, and I see that you're doing a lot of direct, um, direct marketing looking for consumers, but I didn't realize the impact and the power and the number of referrals in the agent network that you had across the country. Tell us just a little bit about that real quick. Yeah, Verl, so, you know, obviously in-house realty, and uh, we won't get too detailed into how we lost Brandon Mulrennan, but we've got a, a little sports injury, and that's why you have uh, myself on the call today, and uh, obviously we'll, we'll fill you in on some more information as we go a little bit deeper into this. But Quicken Loans, uh, as a consumer-facing company, albeit with my team now and, and most uh, people that are involved with Riz Media know that we do have an agent strategy team, realtor relation team, that we are trying to build um, another consumer, uh, the Realtor. Um, but in turn, basically uh, a, a client calls in, goes down a couple different paths with our purchase bankers, uh, ask if they have a Realtor. Uh, if the answer is yes, we take some basic information, uh, ultimately send them over to in-house Realty. At that point in time, they will go ahead and pair that client up with uh, greater than 8,000 possible agents that are out there around the country. Um, if, if, they, if they don't have a Realtor, um, the opportunity there is similar to what I just said, uh, but they will go ahead and pair them up with agents across the country. They can be from anybody, you know, Long & Foster, Remax, Keller Williams, uh, but we are, are a great, great advocate for the Realtor and try to drive business back through in-house Realty, who is a family of company, a sister company of Quicken Loans, and um, really uh, in this kind of ankle deep uh, trying to build a relationship uh, between Quicken Loans and the Realtors out there across the country. I'm, I'm always a big believer in supporting the companies that support you as a real estate agent. So um, don't, not only look at Quicken Loans, but go to the agent relations at quickenloans.com, send an email, and get information on how to become one of their preferred agents. How, how, many, um, how many transactions or loans have you sent to realtors over the last year? 
Well, just uh, looking at it right now, we average uh, about 1,200 uh, opportunities a month, and that's uh, that's closings for us. So that's not just actual all opportunities. And and we believe with the the way that we've built this, um, you know, this client is for life. You know, so the opportunity to get hooked up with in-house realty through Quicken Loans, that is actually my team, agent relations, and the 800 number drives back to my group, and we will definitely get you in touch with in-house realty, have the conversation with that group over there. Brandon Mall Rennan, who is the Director of Brokerage Services. So right now our, our kind of super goal, uh, about 15,000 transactions uh, a year is where we always try to shoot for. On average, we've been probably right around uh, nine to 11,000 for the last couple years running. Uh, so really some great opportunity to become an agent with the in-house realty network and taking uh, the buyers that do not have an agent as they call into Quicken Loans. Well, if you're exceptional and you really can make a difference with these people, then uh, I think that you ought to be involved with Quicken Loans. So thank you again for your partnership and support of these great webinars. We appreciate you being here. And hopefully you'll, you'll engage with us as we ask questions and um, go through some of these, uh, these two great presentations today. Uh, one yeah, last, one last to thank you very much. One last reminder, everybody, is that you want to stay to the end. We're going to show you how to get some of the best content available. And it will come the last couple slides of the event. We'll share it with you how to download that. Let me just jump right into it. Uh, I'm so excited to have with us two of my favorite people in the country, Dano Sales from uh, Maui Real Estate or Remax Lifestyle in Maui, Hawaii, and Melinda Estridge with uh, the Estridge Group with Long & Foster out of Bethesda, Maryland. And when we were discussing different topics that would be interesting to uh, our real estate friends, there's, a lot of, there's been a lot of interest on um, you know, how do we attract the move-up buyer? How do we move people from where they are to the next level? And then how do we get into that higher price point, work with luxury uh, real estate agents? And then that developed into the next conversation. Let's start talking a little bit about international real estate. And, and it's very interesting that both of these agents work in different markets. Um, they have different price points. They have different strategies. But they have several things in common. And one of the things that they both have in common is they're both true givers. Uh, these are people who um, are willing to share with you what really works, the real nuts and bolts, not just the theories behind things. And you're really in for a treat today with both Dano Sells and Melinda Estry. So, uh, Dano and Melinda, welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'll give you a little bit better each introductions as we start your segment of the presentation today. Aloha, and thank you very much, Burl. Really appreciate Thanks, the opportunity Dan. to share today. Hey, thanks, Dano. And, you know, when we talked earlier before the call, you had a little bit stronger uh, voice signal. So whatever you were doing before, if you can duplicate that, I think it'll sound a little bit better. Okay, how's that, Burrell? Is that a little better? Much, much better. So I don't know how many years ago you and I met, but it's we've got to be close to 20. Um, Dano and I met, and uh, we've done some coaching together. We did some uh, – um, we worked just some, during some of the worst real estate time in the history of real estate, and it was really fun to watch Dano sales – change his business model. You know, a lot of people when the business was going under and it was tanking, they went out there and they got into REOs and they got into bank-owned properties and Fannie and Freddie and HUD and all the things they had to do to, to stay with the market. Matter of fact, one of Dan's, uh, Dano's dearest friends did that in uh, Arizona. Uh, but what Dano did is he decided he was going to take his business a different direction and he was going to go after people that actually wanted to, uh, that didn't need financing in order to be able to buy properties and went to a higher end, more luxury market. He ended up listing a beautiful condominium complex near the Grand Wailea, and I watched him work his tail off to attract and find and create special opportunities and programs to be able to maintain a very, very successful business when a lot of people were failing and going out. And I have a lot of respect for Dano, for his work ethic, his attitude, and most of all, for his core values. So, Dano, thank you for being here. And let's talk about, um, share, share with us a little bit what's going on in Maui right now, and tell us about your team. Uh, really, I'm, uh, have, my team consists of my oldest son, Anthony, and he came right out of college uh, with a business degree and a real estate minor in the worst possible time to get in the real estate market. Anthony joined me in 2008, and from that, we've grown our team to most of the people on our team went to his college prep high school. So with technology changing so quickly I knew that I needed to have a lot of energy on my team so we started recruiting people that we felt comfortable with and had known for years and our team is rounded out with another professional our broker in charge who's been in the business uh, 35 plus years knows the resort market of Wailea and McKenna very well and then our office manager 
I uh, worked for another broker right out of high school for 17 years, and when he retired, she joined our team to really give us the uh, glue that we were needed to keep us all together and on track. What's uh, what's the market like in Maui right now? What's the average sales price in the in the market, and then what's your average sales price? Uh, our average sales price is. Um, this winter has been a little quiet because we uh, have a lot of our customers coming from Canada that were in the energy business. So with uh, oil going in uh, half in the last uh, six months, we've seen a lot of our Canadian clients go away. And those were buyers that were purchasing two to $3.5 million condominiums as third and fourth homes. Uh, where we are seeing our market now as new home construction picks up across the country, I picked up a uh, golf course community of 152 homes that are uh, 900 to 1.2 million. So once we got our model complex completed in November for phase two, uh, our uh, absorption has gone from one a month in 2014 to one a week in 2015. That's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Yeah, it's really great. Uh, it's really nice to be able to see, you know, uh, production construction and full steam ahead again. It was so quiet for years. So a lot of our um, our luxury buyers now are, are are luxury sellers. A lot of the our Canadian clients are now looking to actually cash in on uh, some of the, you know, the upswing of the U.S. dollar. So we're getting listings uh, from that now. And when they started buying in our marketplace, the market had gone down uh, 30 to 35 percent on the upper end, and their currency had went up about that same amount, creating a perfect buyer sto uh, buyer's storm for Canadians. Well, now that um, their market has gone the other way in places like Calgary, I'm looking to get some of my uh, American investors into their market and, and start picking up some good deals there for longer-term holds and rentals. There's always business, isn't there, somewhere? Always business. It's just, it's just going out there and uh, creating it. So on this slide, you talk about being in luxury real estate for 31 years. That's uh, So you're not a rookie at this. Uh, I've been really uh, fortunate. I moved into the South Maui market, which consists of two major resorts. Uh, one is named Wailea uh, that has uh, 1,500 acres. Another one is McKenna with 1,800 acres. So it's really been the focus of my practice since I started in 1984. And in that time, I've seen a number of different uh, buyers come and go. And what we're seeing now is uh, a lot of people uh, really are seeing stability and having a, a second home and, and a good opportunity to invest. So we have uh, um, clients from Hong Kong, Germany, um, just all over the world are coming in into our market uh, for resort homes. So you said they're, they're looking to invest. Are they not buying their own personal residences? They're looking to invest and use it occasionally and then put it back out as a rental property? Is that what they do? Well, uh, the property you were, you were uh, referring to across the street from the Grand Wailea is a neighborhood called Ho'ole, and they're really uh, their condo tell. So they're a three-bedroom, three-and-a-half bath, 2,400 to 3,100 square feet. And when the people aren't using them, smart investors like to have these places actually as cash flow. So they do rent uh, between $1,000 and $4,000 a night when they're not using them, depending on season. That's awesome. So, Dan, we talk, um, you've, been, you've done a lot of things with your website over the years. I actually had this conversation with one of my private coaching clients the other day, and we were talking about luxury websites and the image and the, what, what you want to project on your website when you're going after the luxury client. And, um, you know, she was adverse to having lead generation on her luxury website because she didn't feel like um, luxury buyers uh, would give you an information exchange. Tell me a little bit about your web strategy. Well, we, we recently just redid our website. It, you know, it was starting to look dated, so we needed to do a refresher and just, you know, um, make it a lot more cleaner and easier to use. And really one of the things that's helped us on our, our website for our luxury buyers is the amount of blogs that we get out. We actually get out uh, between, you know, five and seven blogs uh, a week, um, and we're really focusing on, 
uh, talking about these particular neighborhoods in detail. So when luxury buyers are coming into looking, we've actually had them, a lot of them comment recently that you have a really clean website with a lot of useful information. And uh, they've been um, letting their friends know about our website and actually uh, just coming directly into our offices and say, we just want to work with you because of your website. So a lot of our strategy is, is providing a whole lot of content on our site. I love that. I have a slide a little bit later that shows some, some examples of your uh, blog posts. On this, uh, on this lead gen site where you have email real estate and you've got search homes, do you get many information exchanges off of that page and a lot of people signing up for search? Uh, we do. We get a lot of people that are signing up for their, what they're looking for. And then it's just, you know, it's automatically being fed to them for their parameters and they can update it, as, you know, all the time. And then we see actually when they're coming up on the site. And from the lead generation, uh, the site now actually has a really good CRM in the background that we're using as well. And you use a company called Dacno, or is Dacno doing all of that for you? Dacno is doing all of that for us. You've been with them for a lot of years. Sure have. And uh, Brad and his team and Bobby, his father, do a great job for us. That's great. So let's talk a little bit about offline marketing. You know, you have a great internet marketing strategy. You're doing a blog. You're active on social media. I thought it was really cool, Dan. I was playing around on your site the other day, and then I went to a local site called KSL.com, and guess what? Your Facebook retargeting was following me everywhere I was going. It would show up on, you know, Maui Real Estate. I thought it was great. Your strategy was actually following me wherever I went online. That's really – we've been getting that comment quite a bit uh, lately. Uh, so when people go on, I mean – getting these cookies into their site and we follow them on all the different things that they're looking at. And uh, that's been very successful for us as well. Uh, tell us what we're looking at here from a direct mail perspective. Um, what are you sending? How often do you send it? And what kind of a result or a response do you expect? Well, those are the two markets. So you can see what a beautiful opportunity uh, it is to work in, uh, in Maui and Wailea and McKenna. Um, so we're getting these pieces out by a company called Real Marketing on a monthly basis, and it's basically going to every owner in both of those resorts, single family, condominiums, and it's just really keeping them informed of what's going on in the marketplace. Uh, so people can see, you know, what's being sold, what's being listed in real time, and we found this has been a very helpful tool for us in our listing presentations uh, recently. A lot of people were getting away from direct mail. And we've ended up uh, spending a lot of money and are already starting to see a good return on our investment. It's not just one thing. You have to have a mix, don't you? Uh, we, we're trying to mix it up and do um, as much different things as we possibly can. And that yeah, no, I, I have no idea what the hier – I was going to tell you, I have no idea what the hieroglyphics on these uh, um, magazine ads are. Well, part of our strategy as well is – uh, not only to get uh, buyers coming in from different countries, but is also showing sellers how we differentiate ourselves from our competition. So I'm not necessarily just waiting for people to come to me on Maui. I'm going out to these different uh, companies in different countries and, and networking with them. Uh, so we are having our uh, marketing materials. Uh, since there's a huge population and a lot of visitors coming from uh, Japan, Korea, and China, we've had all, a lot of our things translated. And this seems to be a very big hit with the sellers because I know nobody in my market is, is doing that. So um, it's, it's having a dual effect of actually bringing new people into the market, but also capturing a lot more listings and being unique. You know, I love that you have a focus on listings. You know, so much of what we do is focused on listings today. And I want to talk about that a little bit, but out of curiosity, when you're dealing with the international clients, when you're dealing with people from Japan or from wherever, uh, how much is financing an issue, and how do you deal with that? Uh, you know, uh, a lot of people. Uh, there are lenders that actually will lend um, to you know for inter you know for international buyers, but a lot of our buyers are cash buyers. I hear that a lot in the higher end that they have their own sources of funds, and it's not as big a deal. A lot of uh, yeah, a lot of the uh, foreign uh, buyers that we're dealing with are debt adverse, and they just like to pay cash. That's, there's a reason why they're wealthy. <laughs> hey, so uh, we, let's so we, you go ahead. No, go ahead, bro. 
So, Daniel, there's a um, everybody kind of wants to have this kick butt listing presentation, so that when they go in, they don't look like an average agent. Um, would you mind taking us through a few pages of your listing and show us what you do to differentiate yourself or set yourself apart from everybody else? Well, a lot of times we're differentiating ourselves because we're going to go out and uh, get the picture of the property that we're going on the listing presentation and put that in, in the cover. And it's our listing presentation is constantly changing pages uh, for, you know, for, for different uh, clients. And um, so it's, it's, it's an al it's a, alive. It's never stale. Each one is customized. I love that. So let me just take it. I think I've got a few slides here. Yeah, this is your get to know Dano. This is in now. Do you do it paperless or do you do it in, on your iPad or do you do a combination? Uh, combination, just depending on uh, you know what the uh, who the buyer or seller is is how we're going to present it to them. It's a little picture. Of, this is how long uh, my son Anthony has been around the business. We actually uh, started building homes uh, on Maui uh, 30 years ago. So that's really part of my passion is actually buying lots, developing custom homes as well. So he has a, a, a really a great knowledge of, of selling homes because he can talk intelligently about the construction projects. I actually put him on as a project superintendent on our, our family home a few years ago, and he was part of a team that dug the footings, tied the steel, poured the concrete, framed it. So it's a, it's a whole um, the whole view is you know from ground up. We do uh, from conception to completion uh, neighborhoods. I love that, and it looks to me like I see a little bit of a tan line there in those short shorts, Dan. I don't, I don't see that with you very often. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's really good to be authentic with your clients and really just, you know, let them know that you're a real person, and uh, we're we let it all hang out. We're all. I think it's I think it's great, and that's a great picture of you and your son. That's one to cherish. This is a slide highlighting your experience. What do you talk about as you go through this? Uh, we're really showing, you know, how we're growing our business year in, you know, year after year and some of our, our highest sales that we've done. People want to work with people that actually get results for them. So this is really showing them the kind of results we're getting on a consistent basis. That's a nice trend if you did a bar chart from, you know, 40 million to 41 million to 70 million. You're going to have a $100 million a year this year. Yeah, I, I'm, that's what I'm shooting for. That's good. You still do you still do much with video, Dano? Uh yeah, we're still doing video. We're getting more into video all the time as well. One of the things we always like to share with you know is people. You know, we can talk about how good we are, but actually getting other people to share some of their experience of working with us. Yeah, I don't want to spend too much time on this. I want to talk a little bit about the international clients with us. Okay, I was not supposed to go there. So um, this is showing you. This is just showing a picture of your team, um, your goal. I'll go through these slides really quickly, just the rest of your listings quickly, as we, and then we're going to bump into international. Uh, this really just talks about, you know, the youthful part of our team, the energy and uh, the experience of uh, the combination has really created great success. And the whole transaction revolves around the client, and these are the people that are going to help you get there. One of the things I love about this slide is, is this separates you as a team versus an individual. You've got experts in every aspect of the transaction, and this is one of the best graphics that I've seen that describes that. I may borrow that from you. I think it's beautiful. Please, everybody on the call, just you know, use it for your own and just change out, and I uh, hope you get a lot of listings from it. And then, of course, you build your brand. Yeah, that's really uh, been a very uh, great part of our success recently is uh, with the growth of Remax in Asia is getting to know a bunch of the regional owners, so they're sending us business as well. That's great. And whether you're with Remax or another company, it's important to differentiate yourself and set yourself apart from everybody else. And so you need to use those tools and the things that are available um, to agents. Let's jump in if we can, Dan, and talk to me a little bit about um, – the international market. I don't think there's many people in the country that have as a greater understanding as you do about what the real estate world, what's going on in the world with real estate. Well, going back to 2008 when things were really changing quickly, I made the decision that I did want to just uh, focus on the international market along with the luxury 
So Anthony was graduating, uh, my son was graduating college. So it just happened to be there was a um, international uh, event in Amsterdam. So we went there to do some father and son bonding and learn about uh, more about the international market. And we both joined the Fiopsi uh, organization and have been uh, involved with it ever since. Uh, part of the involvement now has led that uh, they nominated me to be on Fiopsi's USA board. So it's just, you know, the more time you're spending uh, growing uh, your, your different markets is, is really going to set you apart. I do a lot of traveling um, for pleasure, and I always want to combine it with my business. So wherever I'm going in the world, I'm going to be meeting up with other professionals and, and sharing uh, that I'd love to help them and their clients in, in Hawaii. How much of your business is a result of the relationships you've built through all your travel? Uh, it's, it's, it's gaining every year. So I'd say you know probably about 20% of my business is, is from that now. And I know uh, that's going to double quickly. One of my uh, goals is to open uh, uh, another office uh, on another island uh, on Oahu because they're building 5,000 new uh, high rises over there, and they're really they're pre-selling in Asia. Um, so I really want to be part of that. So instead of uh, just waiting again for them to come, I've been going over there and meeting the people, and uh, that's resulted in me actually. I uh, walked into an office in uh, Remax in, in Thailand, and uh, I'm actually opening an office now in an hour uh, of Phuket in Thailand. And that's just going to, again, you know, show that I'm thinking outside of the box and doing things differently for listings and getting new buyers. Oops, sorry, my, my computer has a little bit of a delay on it. Talk about your unparalleled lead generation locations. Is that what you were, just, is that what you were meaning? Uh, well, one of the things I've, I learned early on, if I was going to go out and get one listing, I might as well go out and get 100 listings. So the top left-hand corner shows the neighborhood that we have one of our offices. I've been on that site. Uh, Melinda was talking about it earlier um, on our conversation about if you kind of can own a building. So I've been at this 120 neighborhood since the very beginning. So we pretty much control the market there for sellers and buyers. And it also turns into people wanting to sell these condominiums and then moving up to, you know, selling from two to three million and then buying five million dollar houses. So we're there nine to nine to five, seven days a week. My team staffs it. Uh, and then again, we just had this uh, uh, golf course community. Same thing. We're staffing it seven days a week. We're actually seeing people that want to come in and buy these homes now. Uh, we've picked up. Uh, six new listings this year from buyers coming in there and buying and then you know wanting us to sell their property. So that's really just been such a great uh, source of leads for us, for buyers and sellers. Do we already cover these? Okay, these are some direct marketing pieces and some... Uh... So this just shows a few of the international organizations I'm involved with. Uh, FIOPSI is the uh, oldest organization in the world. It was founded in Paris in 1948. It has tons of different disciplines. So you're not only meeting with other realtor brokers, you're meeting with developers and attorneys and you know people that are looking for investments in different part of the world. So I'm not only working the Hawaii market and really expanded and, and can send referrals all over the world now and it's it's great. Went on a, a trade mission to Beijing uh, with FIOPSI last year, and another organization is the ARIA, uh, went to Korea. So spending a lot of time in Asia uh, is something that's very exciting to me because it's so, it's so much growth coming out of there and so much money. So how do you go from just thinking about, you know, regular real estate to actually getting into the uh, into the international business. I mean, you, it sounds like there's a lot of opportunity there. I'm not really sure how much. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that and how we change our mindset. One of the things is I would uh, first uh, encourage people if they are inter interested in getting into the international market that NAR has a designation. And it's the Certified International Property Specialist designation. So I know a lot of our callers are, are, um, are our listeners uh, really like to travel. So if you go to the CIPS site, 
and look at where they're going to actually have one of their uh, events to get your designation and go there and spend time with other other people. It really is interesting how how small the world is becoming, and there's billions of dollars now flowing in from other countries to the United States, and just being able to talk knowledgeably about your particular market and global affairs is just uh, is something that's it's really exciting to me. That's cool, Mark. At Quicken Loans, are you guys seeing much of a shift in international markets? What do you What do you guys see? No, not you know. Obviously, yes. There's definitely been a shift in international markets and take on a, a number of calls. Uh, you know, if we are looking into the international opportunity, we we work a little bit in our reload channel um, with international buyers, but that's about the only channel as we speak right now. Uh, very white bordered around the uh, the walls in Detroit, Michigan, of of where we go from here uh, with our our buy-in campaign and and really where our focus is with uh, not only the purchase market, but building great relationships with realtors and agents across the country. And just supporting them wherever they are. Hey, uh, Dano, how do you attract that international client? Do you just get up in the morning and say, "Hey, I'm international now"? Well, it really started by you know the you know going to these conferences. Um, you know, each conference I'm going to, you know, the NAR conference. You know, the international group uh, is just growing by the year. You know, being involved with the company that has a hundred thousand agents in a hundred different countries is really, you know, you have a place to go to, you know, seek out and let them know that I, I would ha be happy to serve them. Um, a lot of our blogging, uh, when we were in China and Korea, uh, we were blogging daily. So some of the, you know, the bigger news services were picking up our blogs. We did it in real time. This has really been, people, uh, blogging seems to overwhelm a lot of people. Uh, what we've done is, I will be, um, I'm not the one that's necessarily going to write every one of my blogs, but I'll be doing the photography uh, of all these different places I'm going, and then I'll send the blogs to one of my uh, team members, and uh, along with a recap, so I'll do a voicemail uh, to them of everything that's gone on the day uh, with people. I'll be taking pictures of, of in their business place, of their business card. And I'll be giving them love to their, you know, to their sites and things like that. So people are just really amazed that we're we're getting these out in real time, no matter where we are. Even if we're like 12 hours out in a country, we get back to the room and get these done, and then and they're out next thing in the morning. And people have been super impressed with that. It's so cool, and it's not. It's um, it's the, what's the hardest part about doing the blog? Is it the writing of it? Is it just committing to it? I think just yeah, I mean it's 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 the committing and and just having it. Um, a lot of people probably don't you know aren't writers or don't have the time to do it, but you know if, even if you're not snapping your own picture and somebody else is doing it, you know just you know it's it's still in your voice uh, when you're getting it out there and somebody else is actually writing it for you. So uh, how many languages do you speak and how do you deal with that? I actually. Um, uh, unfortunately, I only speak English, um, and I do have translators in all the different countries that I go to uh, that can actually – trusted translators that I know are going to be saying what I'm saying and uh, repeating back with uh, – or getting the answers and uh, from the other people. Is that an issue to have an a non-trusted translator that won't really repeat what you say? Uh, it is an issue in, in some of these countries you know, where you're going in and – uh, they're shaking their head yes, and they're really meaning no. Uh, so it's learning about all uh, so many different cultures. It's it's really amazing. So what does this slide show us? Uh, this slide shows you basically I had my card uh, translated in all the different languages of the countries I was going to, and people were even most impressed that I actually had the local chat uh, of the country that I went. So um, you know China will have WeChat and. Korea will have Kakaako, and Thailand and Japan will have Line. So when you're traveling in these countries, you know people aren't necessarily. If you have your phone number only on your car, they're not going to necessarily just call you, but they're going to actually, you know, send a text to you. Uh, so that that was. Uh, people were pretty impressed that we researched that and had those uh, on our cards. I think it's I think it's brilliant. Let me just take a couple seconds and ask any questions, Melinda or Mark. Do you have any questions for Dano? I'm gonna look at the message board real quick.
Dano, not really any questions from, from me. We're doing a, a, a number of things that, you know, you're talking a little bit about in, in what we call our suite of products and, and really, really an open opportunity for everybody on the call to kind of kind of understand and, and please don't hesitate to reach out to me directly or our agent relations team. But, you know, we, would, we don't want to say lending is easy because we all know it's not, but, um, you know, really the value you add is the piece that we're trying to bring to the Realtor. Uh, take things away that they hate doing, marketing, follow-up, um, you know, obviously looking, creating inventory, I think is a key thing that most people are talking about. I'm sure Verl, with his success uh, coaching uh, idea, there's not a lot of inventory out there. So what you're doing with blogs and social media is exciting. I believe I was on uh, last month was more of a social media version. A lot of great things that Dan was kind of bringing up, guys, and uh, really attempting to do this. And this is a constant that I'm hearing across the country as I travel, take on phone calls. Really uh, enlightening to kind of see what Dano's uh, you know doing, and, and internationally, it's not something that I deal with. Uh, and really looking forward to kind of what Melinda has to stay here in the next uh, few minutes. Thank you, hey, Dano. Real quick, what do you mean when you say virtual phone numbers? Does that mean you get a new phone in every country, or is it like getting a Google Voice in each country? No, it's it's really these different chats. So the WeChat is just so people can actually text you. So we're texting, not uh, uh, not doing vo uh, phone. Very cool. Uh, one last one last question um, from me is, you know, you're a marketer and you've got phenomenal websites. You've got print media. You're doing stuff internationally. How much of your overall um, how much of your of your when you look at your balance sheet, what percent of your total income do you allocate to marketing? Uh, we're running about uh, twenty uh, twenty percent of our our budget on marketing right now. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, Daniel, thank you so much. Um, I have a lot of comments on here. One 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 great agent said, "No questions because we're just in awe." And I think that's how a lot of people feel. You've got a phenomenal business, and I love that you're a pioneer and that you're taking things on by the horn. Good luck uh, with your new offices around the world and continued success. And stick around because we may have some additional questions at the end for everybody. Uh, thanks so much. And just if anybody has anything that could just uh, send me an email, it would be our pleasure to share a lot of the things that we're doing to help you grow your business. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I want to just without um, – spending too much time, I want to jump right into our next guest, and that is Melinda Estridge with uh, the Estridge Group in Long and Long & Foster. And I first met Melinda as part of our top five in real estate network uh, that Risk Media holds and runs. And from the very first conversation I had with her, I could tell she was somebody that was different. She was exceptional. The first time I met her in person was in a, uh, it was actually at a mid-year NAR meeting, Melinda. I remember we were having a get together and we had invited other top five members to come and share ideas. And everybody came with ideas in their mind, and Melinda showed up with a briefcase full of printed marketing materials that she had just gone through a rebranding and reprinting with enough copies for everybody in the networking group to say, here, this is what I'm doing. If anybody wants to use it, here's who I did it with, and you're welcome to, you're welcome to, you're welcome to use it. It's rare to find agents at that level that are, um, that are true givers. And Melinda, you've always been that way. I continue to admire the work that you do and um, really appreciate you taking time to continue to give with us here on this call today. Great. That's very nice. Thank you. So Melinda, tell us a little bit about the, the, uh, the market in D.C. Some people think luxury market is, uh, you know, a million dollars. Is that what it means to be in the luxury market at where you are? Um, it's not. And it, uh, Dano and I had discussed that earlier, too, that you know, every city has its nuance, Boston, New York, Washington, and resort areas like Maui. Um, our luxury market probably starts at about $5 million and goes up to about $25 million. Um, and when you're in the middle of D.C., you know, there, there's not a lot of property or land there. So, you know, the really expensive places are, you know, in just certain neighborhoods of D.C., on much smaller lots, and then when you go right outside into Virginia or Maryland is when you can find the $25 million property that have tennis courts and pools and, you know, uh, just scads of square feet. So it, it's, it's an interesting sort of inside the beltway market that, you know, people that work in D.C. could live in Virginia or Maryland or the district itself. But uh, our, I would say that our one to two million, as is stated here on the slide, is probably your upper middle class, you know, attorneys, businessmen, uh, financial advisors, uh, upper level government workers, you know, that kind of thing, State Department and so forth. 
So I heard uh, I heard somebody talking about breaking into the luxury market on a webinar, and I won't tell you who it is, but um, they said something that didn't really resonate with me. They said, hey, if you want to be a luxury agent, all you have to do is just decide you're going to be one and start telling everyone you're in luxury. Is it easy? Is it as easy as that? <laughs> I wish. Um, you know, <laughs> if I had it to do over again, and and like Dano, I've been doing this for about 38 years now. So I started out of law school. I was, you know, very young. And had I had it to do over again as a young person, I would have started probably geographically farming, you know, an, an upper bracket neighborhood because I think that getting started in that way, although it's very hard to break into it, um, you know, helps you start there in addition to other price ranges because I don't think anyone, and it may be different in Maui with Dano, that it's more of a steady, you know, luxury market. In, in D.C. over the past 40 years, you know, have been good times and bad where the luxury market has just dried up completely. And so if you don't have another base of operation or another price range, I mean, I would rather sell two $800,000 listings in a weekend than maybe have a $2 million home that might sit for six months and expect a lot more time, attention, and marketing money. So it, it's good to, I think, be somewhat diversified in that, you know, when one market is more vibrant and the other slows down, it doesn't put you out of business. And the slide that we put together here is just that, you know, DC are an extremely sophisticated, educated, well-briefed set of people, very, very many academics. I think it's really important to be able to speak their language. They're usually highly analytical, you know, high C personalities, want a lot of information, a lot of high Ds as well, as everyone knows the DSIC or, or hopefully profile. Um, they usually uh, want lots and lots of information, but very little time disseminating it. So one of the ways I think to start networking with those people you know, sometimes it's hard for younger people to break into the luxury market because, you know, it tends to be your 50 and above set. So the older I got, the easier it became to have the confidence to deal with those people and, and treat them as equals. Um, I think it's a very good thing to try to be involved with, and I mentioned here, estate attorneys, head fund managers, stockbrokers, um, that, you know, these people have clients that if you go and visit them and show them what you're doing and you are successful, are happy to refer their clients to you. They're actually looking for that, which is great. In DC, charity events, black tie events, country clubs, you know, being on the board of certain, certain organizations, being involved, I mean, it's always nice to live in the community that will have these luxury properties because you start to be known as a neighbor. And so those things really help catapult you into socially networking, which many times translates into business. It never ceases to amaze me that even some agents that aren't particularly successful, they may only do five transactions a year. If they're very, very socially connected, they're getting their business through social you know, events. So even though they may not do the best job, they're very well connected and, and therefore get a lot of people's business. Um, I think when you're dealing with a luxury market, you know, we have down here that, you know, present yourself well. I mean, unlike which I wish I could be wearing Luau shirts and shorts when I worked, it would be so comforting. Everyone expects you to have a suit and tie. Uh, women need to be dressed, you know, very professionally and, you know, doesn't mean you have to drive a Mercedes or a BMW or the most expensive car, but your car has to, you know, look good and present itself if you're driving people around that are in that, you know, um, level of, of wealth. And so those things do translate. They want to feel that you're successful and that you're connected with not only the public um, that, you know, is in their price range and people that are working to be able to buy a home like theirs, but that you do associate with them and realtors that sell to those people as well. Because the networking between realtors in the district is, you know, very, very strong. 
So that's this is an we could we could just finish on this slide. There was so much information you shared right there, but I got to tell you my favorite line was when you said that you know you, you didn't care about the two million dollar listing. You just sell, would rather sell a couple eight hundred thousand dollar listings on a weekend. Um, you know, that, is, is that slumming for you? Is to drop down to the eight hundred? Well, no, <laughs> it's not that it's slumming. <laughs> it's just that that happens to be a price range right now. That if it's priced right, that market is very buoyant. You're looking at multiple offers. So we're fortunate that D.C. is a fairly active housing market at all seasons of the year. It, it's not seasonal. People are moving in, getting transferred, you know, coming and going and, and selling all year long. Obviously, there's months that are, you know, better than others, but we're busy all the time. So nothing ever really slows down. Having said that, when you are at $2 million and above, obviously, there's less people buying those property property so average marketing time can be six months and sometimes longer and when people have these expensive homes they think they're the best home in the world you know they're usually high-level people but you've got less of a buyer pool and they're harder to sell and these sellers expect the world lots of money spent luxury magazines you know a, a really first-class job where the people whose homes are selling quickly in a week or so you know, it's an easier sale and you look like a hero versus keeping anything on the market for a long period of time. And again, I would imagine that resort communities, you know, might have a very long marketing time, but in DC, your average marketing time right now, I would say two million and under, you know, is probably 35 days. So it just gives you at this point in time, you know, a, a little bit about what our market looks like. So how much? Uh, how many? How many units will you sell this year as a team? Uh, about a, well, we're trying to shoot for 120. Last year we did 110. Um, What's your average so, sales price? Well, my average sales price. I probably handle listings between 800 and 2 million most of the time. That's where I'm most comfortable. So I would say a million to a million two would be average. You know, it's so hard to say average because you know our buyer agents, and of course, you know I'm listing properties of children of people I've sold to, you know, that might have their first town home, you know, that's 450,000, you know, outside the Beltway. We're happy to help those people. Uh, we've even listed as far, you know, uh, east as Annapolis for people, you know, waterfront property that would like to engage our services. So we do smaller condos, efficiencies, we do large properties. You know, we're, we're, pretty, uh, we're pretty varied in our product. So just a quick snapshot of your team and then let's get into a little bit about how you attract your clients and what your marketing looks like. Sure. And I thought we had sent you a picture of our team, but you may not have uh, received that. Um, I, just like Dan, have three buyer agents and I've been careful to try to choose people in different age groups with different skill sets. So we hired a gentleman a few years ago right out of college who has just been absolutely super. Um, he deals with a lot of your 20-year-olds and 30-year-olds, gets along with them extremely well, you know, speaks their language, communicates with them the way they want to be communicated with. We're fortunate to have a leads manager. So we too use DACNO for our websites and we also have Tiger Leads that we've had for many years and we've been very successful with Tiger Leads. But with both the website and Tiger Leads, it's very important because buyer agents get busy, we get busy. Instant follow-up is absolutely critical. And so the leads manager, all he does is be in front of that computer working these leads nonstop, sometimes staying in touch with them six months to a year, but can deliver a qualified and viable client to one of our buyer agents. And he's gotten very good at matching that client to the particular buyer agent. So we have a greater success rate of selling them. Scott is in his late 30s. Um, he's been with us now for 13 years. Again, he does an incredibly good job and a lot of business a year. He's very smart. He works with a lot of investors. He knows the DC market and the Virginia market like the back of his hand. He deals a lot because he's married with children with a lot of our 30 to 40 year olds, both investors, uh, high level couples with children, and he speaks their language being involved with that. 
and then my husband and I, and you know, uh, I just turned 60 this year, and my husband is a few years older, uh, we're able to deal with your 50, 60, 70, and 80 year olds. In fact, I love my 70 and 80 year olds. They're the few people that actually listen to what you say, value you know, your position, are willing to pay uh, the commission that you're worth, and really understand the need for an agent and the ability and what they bring to the table, where I think it's harder to convince younger people that you're worth it these days. I see that transition starting to happen, where quicker, faster, cheaper is something that my younger bat, uh, buyer agents battle frequently. When you're in more of a luxury market, I think these people are busy. You know, there's very, very few for sale by owners in our market. They're almost non-existent because when you have that level of client, they're off doing their own thing. They need someone to take care of their property. They need someone that's going to help stage, get them in the right periodicals, know how to speak with the community, uh, the buyers that are buying, uh, network with those buyers and the agents that represent them. So no, being it's affiliated, not, it's not a, you know, I was just, just going to say it's not an accidentally created team. You've strategically put together key people that have expertise in different areas, and I, I think that's really it important really, to point it out. Really makes, it really makes a difference. I, I think you, you've got to take the time to be able to appeal to all different – I mean, we're working with someone now that's an economic advisor at the White House, and he's 38 years old and has never owned a home because he's moved around so much but he's already looking up to $2 million as a first-time home buyer. So that's sort of an interesting demographic. I'm, he's chosen me based on my knowledge of the areas that he's looking in and because my marketing is everywhere. But I am sharing that transaction with another one of my buyer agents that is closer to him in age. So we have the best of both worlds, someone that is more of a contemporary of his but what he sees is my sage advice and knowledge after all these years of you know being in the market. So it works very, very well. And I guess I've gotten to the point now where, and I don't know if uh, Dano feels this way, but getting someone in my car, you know, and showing them 20 to 30 houses, you know, I've done that through my career often. So I would rather have a buyer agent help me with the showings and then negotiate the transaction, write the contract. And obviously, you know, look at what they've narrowed down to give my opinion of value, you know, and, and what I think of the property they've decided on. You're speaking to the choir. That's what we teach. I love that. So let's let's talk. We got to – I don't want to – I want to – you have a lot of information I still want to share. Let's talk a little bit about marketing. I'll, I'm going to kind of go through slides a little bit fast. If you just kind of give us an idea of what it is and how you use it in your business. Okay. I, I've never been a big print media person where I'm so great, I'm number one, you need to use me, but in the luxury market I will say that being affiliated, having a luxury division within your company or your team, uh, affiliated with Sotheby's, Christie's, whatever, does give you some power, there's no question about it. I have a lot of clients that feel that this is something that really puts them in a, in a global light. So whatever it is you're doing to be able to reach the international community, I mean, we've been members of the international MLS, you know, um, we've been, um, here, Bob, see if you, we've been, uh, you know, very, very involved in, like, the Washingtonian luxury magazines and so forth, um, that you do need presence in those magazines because people do, in fact, strum through those magazines when they're looking at upper level bracket properties. And it's not so much about, you know, you're so great, but the fact that they see you and that you're ever present in their mind and visually as someone who works in this market and sells properties in these price ranges, which again denotes the fact that you're networking and know the people that are buying them. Uh, this is a neighborhood that I've been farming and, and like uh, Dano, I'm a huge, uh, geographic farmer. I always have been. I think I have been sending direct mail pieces out my entire career. There is no question that there's return on that. I don't think you need to do it every month once you're known well. Uh, we do it every six weeks. We pack it full of content. Um, we, we talk about something happening in the community. 
We change the pictures of different homes within the neighborhood. We feature the homes we have listed. We even have a section which says search all the open houses in this community every weekend. Uh, this was a piece I did on Rock Creek Park because that's a huge park in our you know, Washington, D.C. area, and I'm on the board of their conservatory to clean the park up and to maintain the beauty. Again, those are things that not only do I feel strongly about that, but it's something that gets you involved with people in these neighborhoods. They appreciate what you're doing and, and therefore pass you business. So this annual Dump and Donate and Shred Day, if anyone's ever listened to me speak before, that's been one of our greatest events. And this year we've got an adopt a pet or a dog, uh, a cat or dog from a rescue uh, organization so that there's something there for kids too. But we probably have 300 people show up at that. So through the years I've met so many of the community doing those events. I do a renovation and staging seminar at our country club, which again has hundreds of people there. So you're visible and you know word is spreading about who you are, what you do, and you're giving back to the community. So these are just you know some marketing pieces. Everyone does very similar things. Um, we use real market reports too. It's funny, <laughs> Dano and I seem to be tracking each other in terms of number of years and the service providers we use. But I agree that Brad Carroll is great. You know, you're always, Brad Carroll and I speak one hour a week on Monday mornings, and I want to know what's new, what we should be doing, how we can parlay our videos, you know, what's the best marketing lead generation, you know, web uh, things of interest to always try to keep abreast of what's going on, and that's been very valuable to me. It's just a continual learning. Melinda, what's your what's your opinion of print media versus the online stuff? So many people are stopping doing geographic farming because they think they can accomplish it with using, you know, SmartZip or some other kind of um, online marketing service. Um, well, when you're geographic farming, you're targeting an area. It's harder to do that with a web because on the web you're trying to be a lot of things to a lot of different people. What first of all in my market, which you know. Uh, the community we live in, I would say, is 40 and older, and most people being about 56 to 75, these people uh, read their mail. It's one thing to go into the web and look at a bunch of people that are out there, but if you're getting something delivered to your property, it's in front of them, and your very much older people you know, still don't rely completely on the web. So my 80-year-old women, when they get my mailers, they save them, and you know it's why they call you. But I still think as people are going through their mail at the end of the evening, if you have something of value, not necessarily just a just listed, just sold, yes, it's fine to get that in there, but if it's content about their neighborhood, if it's showing them what's happening, you know what's selling, all-inclusive, people use that as a resource. And I'm not sure what other people, you know, and, and what their experiences have been, but I have been incredibly successful with geographic farming. Uh, you know, I totally agree with you. Do you do your own uh, marketing pieces, or do you have a company that builds them for you? Uh, we have the real marketing the, the same way Dano does. They, they do a very good job. I mean, we supply them with the information. I will write several articles at one time that I want to publish, which is something from Melinda. So I either have a neighborhood spotlight about someone in the neighborhood that's doing something wonderful or write about something within the community that I love. So it might be one month about wet basements, what to do about them, you know, call me, here are some resources. Uh, last month it was about Rock Creek Park, how much I love it, what's on the docket for that. And then every month it's fresh where someone's interested, you know, in hearing about, you know, something that, that involves their community. Fascinating. So if I want to become a neighborhood expert, give me the quick, uh, the shortcut. I think you need to see every single property that's available in that marketplace. I think you need to be aware of what's selling, how fast, and to whom. I think you need to be on the neighborhood board if, if you can in some way. I think community events and involvement are extremely important. Um, magazine presence, that, that really doesn't have much uh, pull within a neighborhood, but 
I think if you're in the luxury market, some of the luxury market magazines are very helpful. But whatever you can do to be a resource in that neighborhood, you know, that's really where it's at and people associate you. You know, you don't want everything to be one neighborhood. We all farm an area and may do most of the business there, but we have to remember that we can't rely on that alone. So your website and lots of other vehicles, you know, because we list everywhere. Yes, I do a lot of business in my community, but I also do business in a lot of other neighborhoods as well. So you don't want to pinpoint or target too much because then you're, people are going to think that you don't work elsewhere. Does that make any sense? Absolutely. So when things are tight and things are selling as fast as they are, what do you recommend to do to uh, generate listings when everybody else is struggling to get the inventory? Well, I think your presence, your signage, your success rate, your ability to convey your success rate, you know, we are absolutely avid about staying in touch with past customers and clients and service providers. We had a client party last week. We had 150 people come. There was a waiting list. You know, it was a dinner and an opera night. We do something different every year. But by staying in touch with that client base, you know, you create business. There isn't anyone I hope that I've worked with that wouldn't feel comfortable referring me to someone like Dano, I use video testimonials all the time. We're very big with video. We're always trying to give uh, seminars and educational forums for our past client and community. So the more you give back and keep in touch and are always in front of people, that's going to get you in the door. There's just no question about it. I love that. How do you attract the move-up buyer, someone who wants to move up to the next level? Well, I think that is a function of being in the business for a while. I mean, it, it's great to not only farm possibly a luxury market, but the market that would be below that. So that if people are looking to move up to something more, you're farming both those areas, which is a perfect segue. So when you have a special property, the more email addresses you have, the more people on your mailing list, you can target market to some of those, you know, we have a coming soon thing now here before something hits the market. So I may choose a neighborhood that is a perfect neighborhood to move up to the neighborhood that I'm getting a listing in. So I may do a target mailing to that neighborhood about something coming soon. So that really helps attract move up buyers. And also web generating, if it's done well, and I think Brad Carroll does do an excellent job and our Tiger leads, you know, we have more buyers than we know what to do with. What we're trying to find are the people that are ready to pull that trigger in 30 to 60 days. So you can have a lot of buyers, you just have to have a system and a mechanism to keep in touch with them until they're really ready to get motivated and move forward. Melinda, I thought it was interesting that you don't have a canned listing presentation. Well, it, it, that probably isn't when it's, I say not canned, I'm not reading from something. I have a list of questions that I've included. I've learned from Bob Bolin, who was my coach and a mentor for a long time, that a question-based listing appointment, which focuses on the client and you're not busy showing and telling, makes a huge difference. I think most people, when you go through that door, you've been called in because they recognize the fact you're successful. They've come in based on your marketing you know, materials to begin with, not to mention the fact that you know, uh, you know, your signage is everywhere. They know you've been successful. So really, it's about that client when you walk in that door. So I have uh, a set of questions that I ask every seller that I'm in there to really, really get to the bottom of what it is they're interested in, you know, what they feel they need, and how we're going to tailor this process to their greatest goal. You pass by a picture before, a slide before, of the group of realtors. Um, could you go back to that slide briefly? It, it Right there. Um, this was a group we started over 20 years ago. These are agents from all different companies, Sotheby's, uh, Washington Fine Properties, we have a lot of boutique from City Homes, Long and Foster, Prudential, Coldwell Banker, some of the top agents you know, in our area. This was one of the best things I have ever done. We have all become incredibly good friends. 
We have more people that are in the group now that are not included in this picture. We actually ran this ad on the Washingtonian saying that here are agents from all different companies networking together to be better and more well-educated and connected for you. And we got such incredibly good feedback on that because agents can be so competitive to see that agents actually are networking together, friendly with one another, sharing each other's listings, helping them price properties, helping them get them sold has been one of the best things I've ever done. So I cannot st uh, stress that enough. This is the seller questionnaire, the set of questions that I, I know them by heart, but I bring them in and I fill them out. When you're taking notes when someone's talking, they know that you're paying attention to what they're saying and it's giving you a clear idea of what's important to them. So if they continue to answer your questions, they're not thinking about objections or sizing you up necessarily. It's about them. Does that make sense? I mean, it really works extremely well. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I appreciate that. So much information. Just let's do a quick review of you know, your advice and tips and strategies on working in this luxury and move up client. Well, you know, again, any sort of organization or black, you know, again, everyone's area may be a bit different. So there are probably different organizations, but take something that you have a passion for and, you know, try to revolve or involve yourself with a community and, and that particular organization or cause and make it your own. You know, there are people that have religious groups, you know, they deal with people in their church or synagogue and that's a very tight association. Um, I sponsored cleanups of, of the park and did a video on that. People were extremely pleased that I not only am trying to sell real estate and be an expert in their area but care about the neighborhood and am doing something that promotes the neighborhood. Um, if you're in the luxury market, those luxury publications and luxury websites it's good to have some presence there until you're very well known. And it's good to have a luxury section on your website where you've got some of your luxury homes so that people know that you work in that market. And someone like DACNO or another website provider that's good can help someone do that. Melinda, there's an incredible number of questions and comments on your presentation and also for Dano. And because of time, I can't get to all the questions, but here's what I will promise you. Um, if you go to workmansuccess.com forward slash luxury, Dano's made available um, his entire listing presentation. Melinda's made available her new seller guide. Um, Melinda, a lot of people ask me about this. It's Melinda Astrich. It says Melissa. Melissa everyone, oh, that's a typo. Sorry. Well, everyone thinks of Melissa Etheridge, the singer, so <laughs> no worries. Right. No, that's, that, a couple of sets of eyes missed that one. I'll make sure I fix it before no it goes problem. out. No go problem. to workmansuccess.com, and you can download all of these gifts from our presenters today. Melinda, several people are asking me if I can share your seller questionnaire. Uh, yes, are you okay absolutely. with us sharing that? Absolutely. Okay. If you, re if you request a, uh, a business consult or you download the information, just put in the notes that you would like the questionnaire, we'll email that to you directly. It will not come to you automatic because it's not in the automated system. Um, uh, Mark, any anything from Quicken Loans that you'd like to add quickly as we wrap things up today? No, just really a thank you. Uh, great information from both Dano and Melinda. Um, obviously, if you have any questions uh, regarding farming, I mean, that's one of the big things that I talk to many agents across the country. would love to speak to you on something we're doing with a sister company, a uh, part of the Quicken Loans family of companies. Please feel free to reach out to the agent relations email that's in the deck. And uh, obviously, very open to any type of contact, calls, texting. Uh, please let me know if I can be of any help in any way moving forward. Thank you so much, and thank you all for being here today. Remember, get a copy of today's presentation as well as notes. You simply go to workmansuccess.com forward slash luxury to download that. Thank you for attending, everybody. On behalf of Risk Media, uh, Quicken Loans, our great partners, Melinda Estridge and Dano Sales, have a phenomenal Memorial Day weekend. Everybody stay safe, and uh, greatest amount of success as you move your business to the next level. Thanks, everybody.